How's it going, everyone? In today's video, we're going to learn how we can use Rust in Python to really take advantage of Rust performance. And we're going to be doing all of this in the Z code editor, which coincidentally is written in Rust. And in case you want to try out Z, I've left a link in the description box down below where you can download it for free. Now, before we start this, I do have a couple of disclaimers. The first one being that you should be familiar with Rust on some level. Otherwise, writing code in Rust is going to be quite hard. Now, in case you want to learn Rust, I do have a second channel where I'm currently teaching Rust. It's called Rustfully, and I'm going to leave a link to that in the description box down below as well, in case you feel like learning Rust. The second disclaimer is that everything we're about to do is only compatible up until Python 3.12. And they're currently working on making this compatible with Python 3.13, but at the time of the recording, it is only compatible with 3.12. Anyway, let's get started with creating our project. Right now, I'm just in a folder called Projects where I can run cargo in it and create my Rust project, which will be called Rusty Snack. Now, when I open up the sidebar inside my projects folder, I should have a project called Rusty Snack containing my Rust project. Now, the very first thing I'm going to do inside here is open up Cargo and edit the dependencies. And the dependency we'll be using here is PyO3, and the version is going to be set to 0.21. And the only features we'll be using here is the extension module. And above, we need to define the library, and it's going to be called Rusty Snack, and the crate type is going to be set to CDYLib. Now, going back to our Rusty Snack project, we're going to to click on source and create a new file called lib.rs. And this is where we're going to be defining all of the code we want to run in Python. Now, py03 is a Rust library that provides bindings between Rust and Python. It handles all the complex work of converting between Python types and Rust types, managing memory and creating the Python extension module. It's really quite amazing how seamless it makes everything. The very first thing we need to do here is import the py03 prelude which gives us all the essential types and macros we'll need. This includes things like PyResult, PyModule, and the PyFunction and PyModule macros that make it easy to expose Rust functions to Python. Next, let's create our very first function. And to do this, we'll be using the PyFunction attribute macro, which tells PyO3 that we want to expose this function to Python. When we end up building the module, PyO3 will automatically generate all the code needed to call this from Python. Now, the function itself, is going to be a simple add function, which adds two integers of type i64, which is a Rust type. Now, PyO3 will automatically convert Python's int type to i64 when this function is called. Next, let's create a function that works with strings. And this function is going to be called greet, and it's going to take a name of type string slice, which is just a reference to a string. PyO3 will automatically convert Python strings to Rust string slices for us, and then convert our Rust string back to a Python string when we return it. Personally, I find it really convenient that PyO3 handles all these type conversions automatically. It means we can write normal Rust code and it just works with Python. Next, let's create something a bit more interesting, a Fibonacci function. This demonstrates that we can write more complex logic in Rust and still call it easily from Python. So right under the greet function, I'm going to paste in the Fibonacci function. And here we'll take n, which is an unsigned integer, of 32 bits and return an unsigned integer of 64 bits. Now the match expression is a really powerful feature in Rust. It's similar to a switch statement in other languages, but much more powerful. Here we're using it to handle the base cases zero and one, and then using a loop for the general case. But now that we have a couple of functions that were written in Rust, we can finally create the module itself. So at the bottom, we're going to use the PyModule attributes to tell PyO3 that the next function is the entry point for our Python module. And this function is going to be called Rusty Snack. And the function name Rusty Snack will be the name of the module when we import it in Python. Now the function signature is going to look like this. In earlier versions, you might have just used PyModule, but in newer versions, we're using a bound. This is part of PyO3's move towards safer APIs. The bound type ensures that we can't accidentally use the module after Python has dropped it. And then this will return a py result. Now inside this function, we register all the functions we want to expose to Python using the add function function, which is going to look like this, m.addFunction. Then inside, we need to use wrap function. And this macro handles the wrapping of our Rust functions so they can be called from Python. So the first one we need to add is add, and then we need to pass in m. 
then we need to use the question mark operator on both of these. Then we need to do the same thing for greet and for the Fibonacci function. And if everything gets registered successfully, at the bottom, we want to return OK. This concludes the Rust part of the video. Now we can open up the sidebar and get started with the Python part. So inside the Rust project, we're going to create a new file. And this one's going to be called pyproject.toml. And the first thing we need to do here is define a build system. And we're going to say that it requires Matterin and that the build backend is also Matterin or Matterin, Matterin. Then we want to define the project and the Python package name is going to be called Rusty Snack. Then we need to define a version, which we will set to 0.1.0 and that it requires Python version 3.7 and above to work. But after we've created our pyproject.toml, we can open up the sidebar and we can create our main.py file. So main.py. But before we try to link Rust to Python, we're going to have to install Matrin. So to do that, I'm going to open up the terminal. I'm going to navigate to my Rusty Snack folder. And inside here, I'm going to create a virtual environment. Venv.venv. Then we need to activate the virtual environment. So to do that, we'll type in source.venv slash bin slash activate. And finally, we can install Matrin. And once we have it installed, all we need to do is type in Matrin develop. And with that being done, we can clear the console and move on to our main.py file where we can import Rusty Snack. And just to see if it works, we're going to create a result and we're going to add two numbers together. This might seem trivial, but it demonstrates that we can pass in Python integers to Rust and get Rust integers back all seamlessly. Then we're just going to print the result and hopefully get a result back. So let's open up that terminal, type in Python 3 main.py. And as a result, we got eight back, so it worked. Next, let's try the greeting function. So here we can type in rusty snack dot greet, and we're going to greet Bob. And since this returns a string, we're going to assign it to a variable called greeting, which will be of type string, and print that greeting. Then let's run main.py once again. And I got a name error because this was supposed to be rusty snack. So let's try that again. And as an output, we got hello, Bob, welcome to Rust in Python. So that worked as well. And finally, let's demonstrate something a bit more interesting, calculating Fibonacci numbers. This is a great example because it shows how we can leverage Rust's performance for computational tasks while keeping our Python code clean and readable. Personally, I like to use Rust for performance critical functions like this, especially when you're doing a lot of iterations or calculations. The speed difference can be quite noticeable for larger computations. So what we're going to do here is calculate the first 10 Fibonacci numbers. Then we're going to open up the terminal and run our script once again. And as an output, we got those 10 numbers back. Also, if at any point you want to edit the code you wrote in Rust, you can do that by going back to the library, creating a new function. And this one's just going to be a demonstration, which I will call hello. It's not going to take any of this because all it's going to do is say hello from Rust. So print line, hello from Rust, semicolon. That's literally all we're going to add here. But now we can open up the terminal, type in matrin develop, which we need to run every single time we make a change in Rust. So once we've done that, we can go back to main.py and type in rusty snack dot hello. And now when we run this in Python, we're going to get an attribute error and rightfully so, because in lib.rs, we did not register this function. So down below, we need to add that, just pass in hello, save, run matrin once again, and this time in main.py, it's going to print hello from Rust. So I really hope that gave you a good idea on how you can connect Rust to Python and more or less what the process would be every time you'd want to edit the code in Rust and run it in Python. But do let me know in the comment section down below whether you have any other questions or whether you want a follow-up video that explains more regarding this topic. But otherwise, with all that being said, as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.